Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. I, Grey Wolf, son of Black Wolf. Black Wolf was son of man who looks at sky. I am Indian. My people are Dakotas. We are Plains Indians. We have been here longer than mind of man can remember. We are a very proud nation, and we honor our traditions and our customs. But we are, first of all, Americans. <laughs> The dreaded war cry has been silent for many moons, and tomahawk has been buried. The war of paint and scalping knife are only memories. And yet, one day, not too long ago, Ranger Bill's men heard war cry again. I, Grey Wolf, tell you now about... The Return of Sitting Bull. Hey, Big Chief! Hey, you! Eat Big Siwash! Come here! Hey, you engine! Come on over here! What is it you wish? What is it you wish? Oh, brother! What a way to talk! What is it you wish? Look, you're an Indian! Indians don't talk fancy like that! You're supposed to say, Ugh! Oh! Me eat Big Ormsby. Engine! You know. I'm in a hurry. I have several errands, and then I have to finish some notes. I'm giving a talk tonight at the student union, and I have to prepare You're some... You're giving a talk? On what? You heard the announcement in history class today. I heard the announcement, all right, but I'd rather hear you say it. I'm going to talk about my great-grandfather. And just who was your great-grandfather? Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull. Oh, boy. I can hardly wait. Look out! The engines are coming! Ormsby, I think that this is gone. You think? Now, let me think. And let me tell you something. Look, you're an Indian, so okay, so forget it. Give the rest of us some peace. This is now. Ormsby, no. We got airplanes, we got television, we got atomic fission. Who cares about Indians anymore? Ormsby, I'm sorry, but I Uh, just... Me no savvy pale face talk. Me talk them engine talk. You talk them same, huh? Mm-hmm. He's gone. And can he run like the wind? <laughs> he sure looked mad. Plenty mad. Wonder what on earth it was he said. Come in. Hello, Henry. Oh, Howdy, Grey Wolf. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Carol. Where's Bill? Oh, Washington, D.C. Special course for forest rangers, you know. Oh. You go every now and then. Yeah, I know. Hey, took Stumpy with them to see the sights. Stumpy's never been east of the Mississippi. <laughs> They'll be gone three whole weeks. Well, who's in charge here? Well, Grey Wolf has been honored. Oh, good. I uh, can't think of a better man. I came over here to talk to you anyway. Remember old Two Feathers Flying Hawk? Yes, I do. He wants you. Sent a message by the Indian agent. Won't talk to anyone but you. Anything wrong? I don't know, but he sent this. What? That's just a bunch of dried grass tied up with a piece of red yarn. Hit Indian sign. and mean look out for trouble. Big trouble. And so tonight, the history department of this great university (laughs) has been kind enough to ask me to tell you something... Uh, about my ancestor, Sitting Bull. Oh, boy, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> to an Indian, as to you, it is a fine thing to remember and to honor your forefathers. I do. Strange as it may seem, 
I was born in a teepee. Then why don't you go back? <laughs> so have my whole family been born for many generations. Sitting Bull himself was born there. Oh, go get a tomahawk. <laughs> I believe that we can learn from each other. My great grandfather, before he died, made peace with the soldiers. Became friendly with the very men who had yeah, first Yeah, what about General Custer? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. What about it? I do not wish to offend. I did not think this would happen. But you must know, I must tell you, I am the great grandson of Sitting Bull. <laughs> I'm sure glad you brought me along, Grey Wolf. But why these little Indian ponies? Well, we've got a perfectly good jeep back at the Indian agents. Ah, oh, when we pay a visit to old Indian, we pay him respect by riding Indian fashion. Well, not far now. Does he know we're coming? Yes. Now, well, here is village. Well, there's nobody here. No people inside. They know we come. And they wait for me to talk with two feathers flying hawk. Huh? Oh, which is his teepee? Oh, wait. Yeah, it's that big one. That was the two hawk feathers tied to the ridge pole. Aye. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh. We leave ponies here. Okay. Drop the reins over a pony's head. They train to stand all day that way. Right. <clears throat> Do you want me to stay right with you? Yes. Two feathers is no ranger. Maybe he know you, too. Well. Uh... Hey, we stop here. Ho! Oh! Grey Wolf come to teepee of Two Feathers Flying Hawk. I also bring boy Henry. We come in peace. Our hands are empty. Enter in peace. We enter. Grey Wolf and boy Henry are humble before age and wisdom of Two Feathers Flying Hawk. Two Feathers Flying Hawk welcomes Grey Wolf and boy Henry. Sit here by my blanket. Oh, Thank you. Many thanks. <laughs> It is true. I am old. More than one hundred summers, so they say. Times change. Old ways are gone. I am afraid. Afraid of what, old one? The agent brought the burning grass. It come in May. The grass with the red yarn. The burning grass sent by my grandson. He is in trouble. He is angry. He is my son's son, as I am my father's. Your father was Sitting Bull. Great and terrible warrior. When he sent the sign of burning grass, all trembled. Now I am afraid. Again, another Sitting Bull sends the burning grass. Are you afraid for yourself? No. I am afraid for him and for what he might do. I am very old. Cannot walk. Cannot counsel. Grey Wolf? Yes. There is danger. I know. Help the young sitting bull. You are Indian. Help him. I will help. Well, he big chief, there's my letter of apology. You probably know all about it. Dean of men called me on the carpet and said I had to write you an apology or get expelled after what I did last night when you were supposed to give that talk. So there's the letter. Frame it and hang it on the wall. I do not think you are really sorry. Well, now you're getting smart. How'd you ever guess that? Will you go now, please, Ormsby? When I feel like it, I'll go. Where'd you get the black eye? Oh, I know where you got it. After the lecture that you didn't give. I did not wish to fight. <laughs> That's a new one. You don't choose to fight. You'd rather play with toys, like that bunch of grass you got there on your desk. That red yarn. Those are not toys. They look like toys to me. Engine. Do not call me that. Engine? What, what's the matter? Can't you fight without a tomahawk? Do you need 10,000 other engines with you? Are you yellow? Ormsby, I beg of you, please. Why don't you fight? Afraid you'll get another black eye? 
He big engine, no fight him, pale face. Him scared. Ormsby, please, please. The old days are gone. Engines don't go on the warpath anymore. <laughs> well, looky there. Big engine chief bawling like a baby. Him scared. Him no want to fight. Him scared. Him scared. Him no got his tribe to help him. Him real scared. You're scared. Ah, oh, get a tomahawk. Go on back to the reservation. You're yellow. Nobody cares anything about Indians anymore. He big Indian chief. Where's your tomahawk? You're scared. You savvy Indian talk? You're scared. Airmail special delivery for you, Sheriff. I stopped by the post office after school, and they asked if I'd bring it up, and I said, sure. Oh, thanks a lot, Henry. Let's see. Now, it's from the university where John Harrison Sitting Bull's going. Oh, yeah, maybe it's from... Yeah, let's see. Oh. Bad news? I don't know for sure. It's from John's faculty advisor. Let's see here. I'm not certain whether I should write to you or not, but I feel that some English-speaking person of authority in your general area should be notified of what I can only regard as a very strange incident. As you know, we have been happy here to have a student, John Harrison, sitting bull. The young man has been showing great promise. Four days ago, however, he presented himself in my office and tossed a small wisp of dried grass tied with a piece of red yarn on my desk. You're burning grass. I spoke to him, and he muttered something in what I took to be an Indian dialect turned and ran from the room. Since then, he has absolutely vanished from the campus. I understand some of the students, one in particular, have been deriding him because right. of his interest and pride in his Indian Don't ancestry. You're making fun of him? Is that it? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, in view of his great pride and now his humiliation, I gr can understand a deeply concerned... Sir. Henry? Uh, yes, sir. Where's Grey Wolf? Uh, over at Bill's office. Let's go. <laughs> That's a story, Grey Wolf. Oh, I not like it. What do you think? I try to think like Indian. One of old Indians. Like two feathers flying, Hawk? No, I try to think as they thought longer ago. Like, uh, like the first sitting bull? All right. Cal, what do you know about Battle of Little Bighorn and, and sitting mm. bull? Well, about as much as anybody else around these parts, I guess. The whole thing took place before our time. This General George Armstrong Custer... Chief Yellow Hair. The Indians called him that because his hair was blonde and he wore it long. Well, this, this fellow Custer, this Chief Yellow Hair, was sent on some sort of scouting expedition. He was supposed to try and find out just how many Indians there were in that part of the country. Well, he was part of a whole army, wasn't he? Yeah, an expedition sent out to punish the Indians who were on the warpath. And his outfit uh, acted only as scouts. Yeah, and they found traces of Indians at the Big Bend and Little Bighorn River... Well, as soon Custer as... Custer decided to attack. Attack Sitting Bull. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Some say he disobeyed orders. Others say he was just a glory hunter. Some say he was even foolhardy. But all that matters now is that he did start the fight. And then? And then 10,000 Indians came whooping and yelling over the brow of the hill. 10,000. The biggest Indian army in the history of the world. And Custer and all his men lost their lives. And what happened to Sitting Bull? He and all his men were subsequently caught, tried, and punished. Sitting Bull lived for many years and became one of the leading Indians in establishing a permanent peace and understanding with our government and with the settlers. He even traveled for a while with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Cal, you've told the story well and fairly. But what most people don't know is that to the Olagala Sioux, this affair is still something best forgotten. And there was much grief and sorrow on both sides, much bitterness and hate on both sides. But this was long ago, and the tomahawk has been buried, except for... Except maybe by John Harrison. John Harrison, sitting bull, has been a good young man, a credit to his tribe. He loves his country and his forefathers. But I wonder if maybe this making fun of him, maybe because he's an Indian... You mean this might have driven him off his rocker? Yes, a breakdown of some kind. Too much pressure. You mean he may have reverted to savagery? Maybe. Is he a Christian? No. Like too many of our young people, he likes to think he's an atheist. If he were a Christian, this might not have happened. But nothing has happened yet, Grey Wolf. No, but he sent out burning grass twice. 
It old warning. Of danger? Of real danger. I hope. Oh, what a rough day. Feel good to hit the old sack tonight. Whew, I'm tired. I'm not ready to. Hey, what's that? On the pillow. It's one of those little wisps of dead grass tied up with red yarn, like I saw that Indian fooling with. He's been here. Sitting bull here now. Well, hello, old top. Glad to see you. I, uh, so sit down, won't you? Uh, take a comfortable chair there. Uh, will you, uh, where'd you get that tomahawk? Tomahawk belong me. Belong me before white man ever come. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, sit down, John. Me no savvy John. Me sitting bull. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. Say, I'm sorry I kidded you about that Indian talk. You go right ahead and, and talk regular English. Uh, regular... Me no regular... savvy white man talk. But, but you're John Harrison. You're a freshman at this university. Sure, I made fun of you, and, and I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm real sorry. I, Me I, sitting bull. Sitting bull. Me hate white man. White man no good to Indian. Now, now listen, Harrison. This has gone far enough. Why, why, this is a joke to you. You threw that tomahawk. It's, it's in the wood on the door. What are you trying to do, kill me? Sitting bull no kill boys. Sitting bull never miss with tomahawk. Throw tomahawk to scare boy. John. Uh. I, I, I mean, sitting bull. Uh, Mr. Sitting bull. Uh, please. Please don't kill me. Boy scared? I'm scared, all right. Good. Boy say Indian not scared. Yeah, I'm scared, not you. Get tomahawk. What for? Get tomahawk. I can't. I'm not strong enough. It's too deep in the wood. Good. Pale face too weak for Indian. Tomahawk stay. Boy see tomahawk. Remember Indian. So then he threw this tomahawk at the man that had been tormenting him and vanished again. Well, what's the name of this young man? Uh, a fellow named Ormsby. He's nearly scared to death. Can scarcely talk. The head of the whole university put him on the phone, too. They're all scared. Uh, no sign of him? None. The main psychiatry professor says it's a plain case of... A uh, big word. I kind of forgot it. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, at of... Um, at of... Kism or... Yeah. Edison or... Yeah, that's right. I thought he was. Oh, yeah. You thought so? Well, <laughs> I engine, but I, I read books, too. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Grey Wolf. Uh, that big word had me buffaloed. I don't even know <laughs> what it means. Well, it means returning to savage way. It means that John Harrison's sitting bull, driven by anger and unhappiness, has become Indian on warpath. Attention all deputies, attention all deputies. Be on the alert, be on the alert. Look for John Harrison Sitting Bull, Sioux Indian, 21 years old. Black hair, about 5 feet 10, 170 pounds. Probably dressed as an Indian on the warpath. Use caution, repeat, use caution. This man may be dangerous. Report any suspicious activities to Sheriff's Office immediately. This is Grey Wolf calling all forest ranger stations and fire towers. Watch out for John Harrison Sitting Bull, young Indian who may think he is first Sitting Bull. Be careful, he may be dangerous. Not a trace of him. I can't understand it. Why officers in three states are looking for him. Ah, sitting Bull was hard to find, too. It took whole American army. Yeah, but this isn't Sitting Bull. This is his great-grandson. But he thinks he's Sitting Bull. And he knows woodcraft, and he knows the country. It's like magic. Nobody sees him except when he suddenly appears somewhere and burns a barn or a wheat field. He hasn't hurt anyone. No, that's one thing in his favor. He seems to try to make the people admit that they're afraid. And then he burns a house or barn, making sure that everyone's outside. But that, then he just vanishes again. And the people are afraid? Terrified. Oh, what do you think we... Uh... Oh, might have a call coming in from school. Maybe that it. Yes. Yes, this is Grey Wolf. 
Oh, yes, Professor. Professor, could you tell me what it was John Harrison said to you when you thought he spoke in Indian language? It, it sounded like what? Something about clock. Listen, Professor. Was, was it like this? To lock tight. La clot. Oh. It, it was? Are you sure? Thanks. Thank you for calling, Professor. Goodbye. Well? If he said that, and I'm afraid he did, tell those two men it doesn't look good. How come? You know, Glala Sue, to like to it, to lato, his old proverb, an old saying from long ago. What does it mean? In English, we would say, Tomahawk has no friends. Gray Wolf was pleased you flew out here, Mr. Ormsby. I could tell. He talks a little like an Indian, doesn't he? Well, sometimes he does, sort of. But he knows just about everything. I'll walk you to your car. Thanks. I just hired it for while I'm here. Like I told Mr. Gray Wolf, my father and I both thought maybe if I came out here I could help somehow. It's as if it was all my fault. Well, you didn't know what would happen. You did wrong, but... Well, we all make mistakes. Ah, oh, but mine was so crazy. I'm ashamed. Well, look, Mr. Ormsby, I, I don't want to make you... Well, it's just this. Have you asked the Lord to forgive you and, and guide you now that you're trying to do right? No. No, I haven't. My father asked me the same thing, and now you. I just don't know. Well, thanks for what you said, anyway. It's just that I... Look, on the seat of the car, the dried grass tied with red yarn. Sitting Bull's been here while we we're in there talking. All special deputies, wearing as many men as you think you need, find Sitting Bull. Listen, all rangers, fire wardens, forest men, park men, we must find Indian John Harrison Sitting Bull. If we not find him... He might hurt someone. So far, he damaged much property. Find him if you can. Please find him. Stand away. No come near. Me sitting bull. Me have knife. Tomahawk. Me burn house. Me burn barn. Me burn field. White man afraid. Me no afraid. Me sitting bull. Me set fire to barn. Me burn. Me burn. Well, this is the road to old Two Feathers Flying Hawks, isn't it? Ah. Uh -huh. I thought so. Well, why are we going here? I have an idea. Not much of one, but the only thing I can think of. We must do something. Sheriff to Ranger. Hey. Sheriff to hey, Ranger. Isn't that our radio? It sounds like Cal. Uh, yes, Cal. This is 2846GW. Gray Wolf here. Go ahead. Over. Trouble. Another barn burned. Big one. Full of farm machinery. People getting angry. Some ranchers have threatened to shoot John Harrison as soon as they see him. Shoot first and ask questions afterwards. But we can't find him. Over. Maybe I have plan. Indian plan. We'll try. Over and out. Good luck. But hurry. Over and out. Hey, that's bad news. Uh, we try Indian plan. Indian way. Two feathers flying, Hawk. I want your help. I am very old. I can no longer... Then you remember old games. The games the seven nations played when tribes met in spring. I remember. You remember the game of shining knives. Ah, I remember. The two strongest braves in all the tribes, each wearing just a breechcloth and each carrying a curved knife. Ah. Each man grasped the other's wrist, and then they fought. Until one proved himself the stronger. With these sharp knives. I will challenge Sitting Bull. I will fight him at game of shining knives. He's an Indian. He must accept challenge. If I win, God grant I can bring him to census. And if you lose? Get word to Sitting Bull. No one but you can do it. Give him my message. Well, 
Well, there's those ruined cliff dwellings. You can just see them over the top of the rim rock. This is as far as we go. It's cold. Sun's almost up. Do you think old Two Feathers got the message to John? Uh, we know soon. Here comes Sun. Sheriff Grey Wolf, look. Smoke signals. From yeah. way up there near the top. Yeah, smoke signals say. Sitting Bull accept challenge to fight Grey Wolf at Game of Shining Knives. I go. Here, Henry. Take blanket. Sure. Goodbye, my good friends. He looks so, so alone, walking out there on the desert. He is alone. Who comes to do battle with Oglala Sioux? Grey Wolf, son of Black Wolf. Grandson of man who looks at sky. I am Sitting Bull, son of Iron Hand. Grandson of Two Feathers Flying Hawk. Great grandson of Sitting Bull. You fight. I fight. Mm. Take hold, wrist, my knife hand. Mm. Now, I take hold your right wrist, same way. Mm. Now, we fight. <coughs> <coughs> Sitting bull went. Sitting bull always went. Me sad engine. Me went. Now we'll sit. Gray wolf. Strong. Sitting bull stronger. Oh, my arm. My knife's gone. You. You helpless. You no know can move. My knife ready. You know our law. Engine law. Me know. Listen, John Harrison. Engine law. See, I kill you now. But I'm not going to. Why, you no know, kill me. Though you've been foolish. You can be good man again. Why, you no know, kill me. I came here today to help you. And that's why you no know, kill me. Because I am Christian. Very well. You win. You do win. The ghost of Sitting Bull is gone. I'm John Harrison again. I've come to my senses. I'll go back and be a man. And if I can learn to be as brave as you are and fight as well as you do for what's right, then I want to be like you. Grey Wolf, can you teach me to be a Christian? Wait a minute, Bill. Don't hang up. Here's the sheriff. Bill? Hiya. Yeah. Yeah, the doc says uh, John Harrison will be okay. Just needs a little rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, check with the idiot agent. He says the commission will take care of all the damages. Uh, oh, oh, don't hang up. Here's Henry. Here's Henry. Hey, Bill, John Harrison's sitting bull's been converted and is... Yes, Mr. Ormsby and John Harrison are now friends. Uh, maybe next they'll go back and be college roommates. Oh, wait, don't hang up. Here's Grey Wolf. When you come back, Bill, I tired one plenty of sleep. Come back pronto. <laughs> See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill!